Welcome to Pro Wrestling History Daily Top 5. I'm your host, the eclectic gentleman, Stefan Watts, and join me as I count down the top five moments for this day in pro wrestling history. But before we get started, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get our wrestling history on. Number 5, 1961. Lisa Mary Moretti is born. Better known by her ring name, Ivory, she's a retired professional wrestler, teacher, and coach, best known for her tenure in the WWE, where she is a three-time women's champion and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2018. Moretti began her career and first found national exposure in the independent promotion Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, where she performed as Tina Ferrari from the mid to late 1980s. Moretti debuted in the WWE in 1999 as the manager for D'Lo Brown and Mark Henry. She won the Women's Championship twice before becoming part of a villainous right-to-censor group, a storyline stable where the character's harshly conservative, psycho-political views. This led to her third Women's Championship victory. In her later years with the WWE, she wrestled only sporadically, Moretti co-hosted WWE Experience and served as one of the trainers on WWE Tough Enough. After she left the WWE in 2005, she wrestled for Women Superstars Uncensored, winning two other titles, and was also inducted into the WSU Hall of Fame. Moretti also began volunteering at her local animal shelter, and in 2007 opened an animal care and grooming facility named downtown dog in her hometown. Number 4, 2015. Thomas Edward Gilbert Sr. passes away. He wrestled for Continental Wrestling Association and throughout the South as Tommy Gilbert. He was the father of wrestlers Doug Gilbert and Eddie Gilbert. Tommy Gilbert made his debut in 1969, wrestling for promoter Nick Goulas. In March 1975, after wrestling primarily throughout Tennessee for nearly six years, he began going to other territories like Atlanta, Amarillo, the Canadian Maritimes, Florida, Kansas City, the Mid-South, Memphis, Puerto Rico, and the Mid-Atlantic areas. After retiring from active competition in 1984, he became a referee for Mid-South Wrestling until its buyout by Jim Crockett Promotions in 1987. Number 3, 1958. El Tejano is born. Wrestling from the early 70s to the early 2000s, he wrestled under a masked and unmasked monikers for various promotions. His son wrestles as A. Tejano Jr., in tribute of his father and another son wrestles as the masked supernova. During his professional wrestling career, he helped promote and make popular the concept of trios matches, three versus three tag team matches. He also tagged with Silver King, collectively known as Los Cowboys, working both in Japan and the United States of America, achieving notoriety outside of his native Mexico. Number two, 1942. Ed Lewis defeats Orville Brown for the Midwest Wrestling Association version of the World Heavyweight title in Kansas City, Kansas. This was a rematch following about where Lewis beat Brown on November 5th. Number 1, 1987. The first and only head-to-head pay-per-view war between the WWF and the NWA, Jim Crockett Promotions, takes place. After years as a live and closed-circuit event, the decision was made to turn Starcade into the first non-WWF pay-per-view wrestling event. However, WWF countered them by presenting the very first Survivor Series. Due to WWF's track record with pay-per-view, WrestleMania 3 was the biggest event of its kind on pay-per-view, many cable systems opted to present the WWF's event over the unproven Starcade. The result was Survivor Series pulling in a 7.0 buy rate, while Starcade, on a lot less systems, did a 3.3. Cable companies stepped in after this showdown and made it clear they would not allow the companies to go head-to-head again, at least on pay-per-view. And that's our list. Make sure to comment below what you feel was the number one moment for this day in pro wrestling history.